So as I've uh, reported many times in the past three years that it's illegal for a woman 59 years of age and older to live off grid. Carolyn moved here, I guess when she was 59, might've been 58. Before that, we lived in a pop-up camper and then a, this camper actually, we're tearing it down. I'm gonna talk about this one in just a second. And now we live here. So now for the folks that are new to this channel, bear with me, I wanna talk about this for a second this camper here that we've tore down. Until you get used to the structure of my video, it'll seem like I'm bouncing around, but I'm not. I will get to the point of this video. Carolyn and I built this camper probably about six years ago, five or six years ago, and we traveled around in it after our camper was burned down in a national forest. We used to travel the country, called ourselves nomads. You can go back to my early videos and see all that. We gave it up to live here. It was a pretty stressful life. A few days ago you saw that I had a lot of it laying right here and then I got the cab over and I tore it apart and so I'll start getting that disassembled and burn what I can burn get the rest off to a dump and then I'll start on the center section so the roof section is all cleaned up finally well, I mean except for the remnants I need to get a rake out here and rake it a little better wish I'd have cut the grass before I start tearing it apart because that's hard to get out of the grass but I don't think I'm gonna touch this any further until the first frost. Because I know there's a ton of snakes under there. I've had nothing but a snake issue this whole summer under there. Mostly black snakes, but I still don't wanna walk up on them. I'm glad it's getting done because it was blocking the sun to the solar panels. I knew that would eventually happen this fall. That solar panel there on the edge was starting to get blocked pretty heavily by the camper in the morning. We moved these up here to get a few more hours of sunlight. It was a strategic move, but I knew the camper was gonna to have to be tore down. And it was in bad shape, so. Kind of brings me to yesterday. Yesterday we were pretty cloudy, and I didn't know if we'd get enough sun to charge batteries. So what I did was I ran the generator when I got up for a half hour, just to give us a little bit of electricity in the batteries to get us from 5 a.m. to 9 a.m., 9.30 a.m., that's when the sun comes up. But it was really cloudy, so I went ahead and ran it and it did fine, but by 11 o'clock, we were down to 12.1 again. That was pretty low. You don't want to get your batteries lower than 12.3. So I started it, and I thought I'd run it for another half hour. My goal was to get us into the evening time, and I was going to run the generator for four hours, which is what it takes to charge batteries. I didn't have the generator running for 10 minutes, and the sun kind of peaked out just a little bit. Got us about 20 amps which is more than enough to get the batteries charged. So from 11 to four, five, six, somewhere around there, the batteries got charged. Since we've improved the solar panels with that extra charge controller and getting two extra solar panels, it's, it, this is just phenomenal how much electric we're making. But I didn't fill the water for the last two days because of the cloudiness. So today I was able to fill the tank back up, the IBC tank, and. I don't know. I, I don't think we're going to have any troubles with solar panels from this point forward. I've done everything I can to fail as a test, and they just won't fail. i got to be careful. I would, there was no way I was going to be able to run the well yesterday, but we got plenty of water in the IBC tank, 275 gallons, to get us through a series of days. And I can run the well off the solar panels on a day like this, where it's nice and clear from, well, depending on the time of year, anywhere from 9.30, 10 o'clock, to about two o'clock. And then I wanna shut it off to make sure I get enough sunlight to charge batteries so I can get through the evening, the nighttime, to run the freezer. Carolyn's responsibilities around here are pretty, pretty light in my opinion. I mean, she tries everything she can to keep busy. For example, right now, she is working on the walnuts. This is a walnut tree and this, produces walnuts about every two years so two years ago we got some walnuts but this year we're getting a ton more walnuts than we did two years ago i mean they're just everywhere so she's been doing a lot of reading last time we did it we put ourselves through too much work so she's letting them sit on this ground until they rot and now she's got walnuts and she is literally doing this with her foot now she is taking them up on the porch and cleaning them and different things but you don't have to they do stain your fingers pretty bad. This is just something she's doing to keep busy. We got enough now that we don't have to worry about the squirrels outdoing us. We got this tree here, and then we got a massive tree down there by the creek in the woods. 
it's huge. I haven't even went down there to check. She cooks two meals a day. In the morning, she cooks bacon and eggs, and then something for supper, about three o'clock. The biggest chore I think she has is doing laundry. People just absolutely hate the idea of doing the laundry by hand. But I, she's got her sinks here. I gotta fill this one. Wasn't sure we was gonna have enough sun today, so I didn't fill it when I was filling the water tank. Turned out we did, but I'll fill it tomorrow. She just said she didn't need it. She used to cook on the back porch, and that was a big gripe from a lot of people. She's just too old. She shouldn't be cooking on the back porch. She had this Coleman camp stove that she cooked on. We should, I still make coffee on it every day, twice a day. But now we got the camper. She's been cooking in there. But she does a lot of things in here now. Now in the wintertime, she does laundry in the house using a bucket and a plunger instead of the sink and the plunger. During the winter, she will sprout sunflower seeds. It's not really a big deal. She has different methods, but essentially all you gotta do with sprouting sunflower seeds is put it in some water, next day drain the water, and then keep them moist for three days, and they sprout. Then she turns 50 pound bag of sunflower seeds into a 250 pound of sunflower seeds. That gives the chickens plenty of protein through the winter. Another thing she does, and this is just to save money. This isn't something she has to do. I keep telling her she doesn't have to do it, but this is how miserly she is. She has a grain mill with a hand crank on it. And so we buy whole corn for the chickens in the wintertime to help keep them warm because corn has sugar in it. When your body burns sugar, it heats your body up. It also fattens you up, so it helps keep the chickens warm in the winter. Well, you can buy crack corn, but it's more expensive. So she buys whole corn and grinds it up. But again, that's something she wants to do. It's not something she has to do. This is a real relaxing life. And that's why I struggle with, with this being illegal in, in mindsets of many people, that it's abuse. Then we have the carnivorous diet. And, and this is just phenomenal to me. Carolyn and I have never been healthier. We're losing weight, gaining muscle, more active. I'm doing push-ups again. I was watching my doctor, for example, on YouTube, and he said something like 80% of the country or something like that can't do 10 push-ups. And I thought, whoa, I can do 10 push-ups. And I get down and I'm one, two, oh, three. <laughs> so I've been doing push-ups. And it's been like four days, and now I can whip right through push-ups. Uh, the 10 so I don't know I'll give it a week or so because my shoulders are obviously pretty sore so I'll increase the number of push-ups maybe next week or the week after I ran up the hill the other day I was absolutely impressed with myself I ran up the hill <laughs> I just don't think we're that unhealthy but then apparently you have to eat sugar because that's what everybody wants us to eat they want us to eat carbs you need to have a normal diet like everybody else everybody else is eating processed foods made in a factory that was invented in the 20s, 30s, 40s, you know, th th that time frame. Kellogg cereal, processed foods. They didn't have this back in the early days. And people would leave the 90 years old. Oh no, we have a much higher life expectancy now. And I agree, we do. A few things factor into that. One, safety. Our companies are safer. The way we do things are safer. I mean, I remember watching Little House on the Prairie and him and his friend, Charles Engel and his friend, had to drill holes to, for dynamite. And one guy was holding the, the, the wedge while the other guy was slamming the sledgehammer. Well, accidents would happen. This, people died because of accidents. So safety standards have increased. The other thing that's increased is life expectancy of babies. Phenomenal amount of babies died at at infancy that's what's raised our life expectancy is people aren't dying before one years old you cannot say that we are healthier nowadays than we were doctors are not doctors doctors are salesmen or con artists might be a better word i've told you all the horror stories that i've been through with doctors you know they give you steroids because you got an allergy and you go blind in the right eye well what do you got to do for that oh you got to go back to the doctor well, I've been working on my eye, and I'm getting better. I, can, I know I'm getting better. I don't know if I ever get 100%, but I am better. Better than I was. I can see things. Look, leaf. Doctors are in it for the money. We want to keep you sick, so you keep coming back. 
And the only thing that we as the patient want to do is just feel better. But there's a lot to say for natural remedies. Now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you what the natural remedies we use for things because YouTube has decided that, that we can't do that on YouTube anymore. So there's another industry protecting doctors. We had a family member that got sick with cancer and she'd gone in deciding that she was not going to get chemotherapy. Well, the doctor talked her into it. $8,000 treatment, several treatments a week for several weeks. Well, it didn't help her. The next year she got sick again. And they said, well, we can't do anything to extend your life, but we can give you more chemo. I mean, that was just a money statement there. That's all that was. I, give me some more money. I, I, so I just have no faith in doctors. I don't go to doctors. The only reason I would go to a doctor is to maybe get an x-ray or a, a scan of some sort to see if there's something wrong with me. And then I'm going to treat myself. Well, to prove it, the other night, Carolyn got pretty sick. And I wasn't sure what it was. She wasn't sure what it was, but she was having... I mean, I'm not going to get into the, the symptoms... Or what it is but it was concerning so this was about 11 o'clock I got went to bed about 8 30 and she was tossing and turning well 11 30 or so I get out of bed put my shoes on I said let's uh, I'm gonna take you to the hospital she just could not spend the time to get dressed because of the sickness so uh, she said just call an ambulance Wow that's incredible so I've been with Carolyn almost 10 years, this coming year, this nine years now. So next year will be 10 years. And she has not once went to the doctor. So when she said, call an ambulance, I, I, I knew there was something wrong. So called an ambulance and I followed her in. Man, the deer were incredible. They were everywhere. I didn't think I was gonna make it. I mean, just everywhere. So I drove slow. Plus, I don't like driving at night too much anymore because of my right eye. So I put an eye patch on my right eye. So if any head-on lights or overhead lights hit my eye, it wouldn't throw me off. But it does severely, when I do that, mess up my depth perception. So I was just driving slow. I was driving about 45 miles an hour. As a matter of fact, I was driving so slow, a cop came up behind me and was just on my tail. I mean, just as close as he could be. Finally, he flashes his headlights. I didn't know if he needed something or if he was pulling me over. I mean, he didn't have any emergency lights, but I was pretty sure it was a cop. So the next gravel road, there was no shoulders on this road. I whip in and he zooms on by me. I would guess he was just aggravated, wanting to get home or whatever. So I get to the emergency room. An emergency room is not anything I would consider a place of an emergency. They're not in a hurry to do anything. Checks on her and says, ah, Probably nothing. So, I mean, he's not interested in helping her at all. But he orders a, a scan. This takes hours. I mean, I get there at midnight. We didn't leave until five. It, it took forever. The thing is, is when I asked the nurse, is something wrong, is something holding us up? She said, no, no, we're just waiting on the lab. Oh, by the way, so this was like several hours. We need to get a urine sample. So she didn't do it right away. She did it, she waited. Get a urine sample, well, how long is that gonna take? Oh, it could take an hour. Why didn't you do this when she came in? So, I mean, they're just not in a hurry. I'm exhausted, but that's okay. I hang in there. And he tells her what the problem is. And I think, oh, okay, that makes sense. I get it now. I've actually had the same problem she's got. And I cured myself. I mean, I do not have this problem anymore. It, it takes a while to clear it up naturally. I don't even remember when the symptoms went away. I'm thinking, hey, this is great. I'm on Google as soon as he says it, making sure what I think we need to do is, is correct. Yep, it's all correct. So he hands her his card and says, uh, I need you to schedule an appointment to get in a surgery to, to deal with this issue. A surgery? What? This is minor. Why would you go in for a surgery? Oh, no, it's just a minor surgery. No. I don't look at surgery as a minor surgery. I don't, it's just not minor. If you're cutting into your body, that's not natural. That's a serious thing. So I Google it again, and the thing is, is there's a medication she can take. Even if he didn't want to give her natural remedies, which I think he should have, try this for a month. If it doesn't help, come back. We'll give you some medication. But he could have just given her medication. No, let's just skip to the most drastic step. 
let's get you scheduled for a surgery. Doctors are in it for the money. They are not in it to help the patient. You go in for surgery, and there is a risk to this surgery. I looked it up. There is a significant risk to this surgery. So I'm supposed to take her in for a significant surgery with significant risk of death when all I need to do is treat it naturally. So I have no faith in the doctors. And if it's abused for her to live here at 62 years old, then I, I, that's just nuts. So if you click this up next box, take the video that I made yesterday. So if I can inspire you. So if I can inspire you to manage your own health so you can live your dreams. Thanks for watching.